Activity 8 reading, Part A, Chromosomes and Cell Division. As a reminder, before we get started, instead of doing stop to think questions, as we read, we're going to fill in the blanks on the statements and questions on the slides. Okay? So, if we're looking at Activity 8, Part A, okay, we have three of them. So, let's look for what we're going to be looking for. Single-celled organisms used cell division to blank. Multicellular organisms use cell division to blank. Each cell, skin, eye, and blood cells in the human body copies its blank before dividing into a new cell. So this way we can go ahead and um, know what we're looking for in the reading. So every organism, I'm gonna start the reading, every organism must make new cells. Single-celled organisms such as bacteria, yeast, paramecia, those are those things that were under the microscope that we looked at. And amoebas use cell division to reproduce asexually. In multicellular organisms, cell division is necessary for the organism, organisms to grow to adulthood and to replace injured and worn out cells. When you get a cut and lose some blood, additional new blood cells and new skin cells are produced from the divisions of cells in your body. So in single-celled organisms, cell division occurs for one purpose, and that's to reproduce asexually, to make clones. In multicellular organism, um, cell division occurs to replace injured, to grow to adulthood, and replace injured and worn out cells. So single-celled organisms use cell division to, and now you can answer this one, multicellular organisms use cell division to blank and to blank. So there's two reasons. Now, when we're talking about this type of cell division, it's one cell going into two cells. And that is something called mitosis. There's another type of cell division that we will be talking about, but this particular cell division is called mitosis. So I'm going to skip the stop to think and go on. In the early 1900s, scientists studying cells in rapidly growing parts of plants made an interesting observation. They saw that just before cell division, the membrane around the nucleus was no longer visible, and little dark structures, which they called chromosomes, you can see them right here, appeared as shown at the left. When the cell split apart, the chromosomes were divided evenly between the new cells. When a cell is not dividing, the chromosomes are long, fine strands, like very thin spaghetti packed into the nucleus of a cell. Before the cell divides, it makes copies of all its chromosomes so that the two offspring cells can each get a complete set. Then the chromosomes become coiled, which makes them visible when observed under a microscope. Finally, the cell divides as shown below. So in this part here, you can see a sketch of what's going on up here. Okay, here we have the nucleus, it's still intact. The nucleus is the control center where the genetic information, the DNA, is housed. It's on these long strands. The nucleus um, is still here in this one, but those long strands of DNA begin coiling up. And once they begin coiling up, we call that chromosomes. There's a um, in-between stage when it just starts to coil called chromatin. But now that it's coiled up, it's called a chromosome. So a chromosome it's just a coiled up form of the DNA. Then the membrane starts to go away. The chromosomes line up. They start to split to opposite sides and each one is left with, of the new cells is left with an exact copy of the one before. This is mitosis, cell division known as mitosis. Each cell in a human body contains 46 chromosomes. So your um, skin cells, your liver cells, your um, ocular cells, which are in your eye, like your cones and your rods. When a human cell divides, the resulting two cells each contain 46. Well, how can 46 chromosomes become two sets of 46? It's not magic. Each crisscross chromosome is two identical copies that are attached. As you can see below, each doubled chromosome then splits during division. So what happens is you have this single coiled DNA strand, okay, it coiled up, and then it doubles itself. It does something called replication. It makes another copy of itself. 
Okay. And so every time before cell division happens, it has to do what we call replication. It has to duplicate. That way, once the cell division happens, each new one has the same amount as the original one. Okay. So we're going to stop there and finish answering your questions on your slides.